Okay. Uh, let's start first with Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Coach. Uh, what led to you guys shifting Legarius Sneed's role a little bit? How has he taken it, and how? What have you seen so far um, in the in the in the um, tape that you guys have? Yeah, I see a lot of good. I mean, uh, listen, he played really well when he was in there early in the year trying to get the best players on the field as much as we can. And that's really, and we've asked him to learn a position that he really didn't do in training camp, but he's doing a great job. He's playing inside at nickel. Go next to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. Um, I wanted to ask you about Frank Clark. Uh, there's some numbers that kind of suggest he's being left alone, like one-on-one -on -one. in a lot of situations. Things like that happen a lot against Tampa. What's your diagnosis on and how he's doing in those situations and how can you get a little bit more out of it? Well, I mean, look at we. Uh, I think we all feel like if if we don't, I think on every play, every time they drop back and pass, we all feel like if we don't get to them, then we didn't get get the job done. And I think Frank feels the same way. But I look at he's out there battling just like the rest of them. You know, I could try to put him in better situations, but uh, I I look at it as a unit thing um, more than anything. I thought we were really good on third down this past week, uh, so it got a little bit better, um, and then. Listen, every time they drop back to throw the football, we're trying to affect the quarterback. It doesn't have to be a sack. I say this all the time. Uh, everybody gets wrapped up in numbers, and those are the, that's the big number. But it's more than that. Um, it's how we affect the quarterback. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Steve. I'll follow up on, on Sam's question about the pass rush. Um, how much are you seeing in terms of stunts that are still being effective if, if not getting to the quarterback? And how much of their production is sort of leading into the fact that you guys are one of the more blitzing teams in the league right now? Uh, Who's production leading? Give me it again. I'm not sure what you're asking. Given the, the pass rush, like the defensive linemen. So, like, you guys have used stunts. How much – Man, stunts, talking about four guys coming and using stunts. Yeah, and, yeah. And, then what, and then what leads to the decision as to – does that have an impact on how, how much or how aggressive you want to be with your blitzes? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, look at – I'll call defenses that require four-man rushes. I'll call defenses that require five. I'll call defenses that require six and all the way up to seven. You know that. Those are the pressures. When I call a defense that requires four, sometimes we straight pass rush, and sometimes we give the guys liberty to put gains on. That's based on certain things, which I'm not going to say here because we get, we're getting ready to play somebody. Uh, and then that's how the games work. And, and sometimes they're effective, sometimes they're not. But um, – I don't know if that answers your question, but that's how we function. Go next to Herbie T.O.B. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach. I, I wanted to follow up on Pete Sweeney's uh, first question to you on Legereus Sneed. Obviously, there's a difference when you play outside corner and then when you're asked to slide inside. What are some of the physical attributes and even mental capacity you're looking for in a cornerback to be able to make that switch? Yeah, I mean, the first one, or the one you mentioned about mental capacity is pretty important. The guy that goes inside and plays nickel – has to be somewhat cerebral. We, we do a bunch of different things. He plays zone, he plays man, we bring him. He goes back and plays the half with the way we rotate people. And the one thing about LJ is he's got, he's got football, get it. I mean, he understands football. We knew that when we started working with him, however many months ago it was, and we just were anxious to get him back after he performed pretty well at corner. What we didn't know is um, could he slide inside and get some of the things done. And right now, I think the, it's been pretty good. In college, he played a lot of different places, so I think he was somewhat familiar with some of the things that he's doing now. Go next to Nick Jacobs. Go ahead, Nick. Brad, I'll have a follow-up for this. Uh, Steve, for you, what do you feel like the identity of this 2020 defense is? Uh, and I, I don't know what the identity is, but I, I can tell you what our goal is always is to keep the points allowed down. That's the number one goal. If we come out of the game and it's at 17 or less, we feel like we've done our job. Uh, so there's been a few games here where we feel like we need to do better but I think we're trending in the right way I thought we played better last week than we did the two prior games um, but look at our guys like to play fast and physical and try to be aggressive uh, that's when we play fast and do a lot of things fast and we're not thinking that's when we play well and then for you what characteristics do you want in your defensive leaders uh, unity, more than anything, bring people together. I mean, I think that's what any leader does. Um, you know, they, they lead with character. They lead by example. I've, I've, I've said this, and I don't know where I got it from, but it makes a lot of sense to me. You want your hardest workers, you want your best players to be your hardest workers at each position. You want one at D line, one at uh, linebacker level, one at DB. And when you have that, everybody kind of follows suit. So 
we, and we have those guys. We have character guys. Uh, we have guys that believe in uniting. Um, I think that's really an important aspect of leadership, especially in this profession. Go, we got two more. Let's go Sam and Seren. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. Um, with Legereus, obviously you knew when he came back you were going to have an extra body that you didn't have when he was playing early in the season as far as with Breland. Um, did you tell him as he was hurt to, to become more familiar with that inside cornerback and maybe therefore he had to do a little bit more mental reps than an average guy who was on IR might have to? Yeah, the good thing was when we had him on IR, he was with us and able to meet every day. So he was in every meeting. Um, and yeah, we, I anticipated it. So we'd gone to LJ and said, look, keep your eyeball on the nickel. And he ran with it. That showed me that he was a pro and he stepped in there the first week. It's, I think it's two weeks now. Um, and really had a pretty good grasp of what that position did. Now he did not have a foundation of reps. Like we didn't play him in any nickel going all the way back to training camp. So I give him a lot of credit uh, for knowing what to do or knowing as much as he did in the, in the reps that he's had, because there is a learning curve, you know, whether you, whether you know it on the board or in the meeting room or not, there's a learning curve when you go out there and it's going really fast, but so far so good. And we'll just keep working with it. Well, last to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, and Brad, I'll have a quick follow up, uh, depending upon what coach says here on this one. Uh, on, on pass rush, right? Everyone gets better uh, when you practice something, right? So that's yeah. why you have practice, right? And, and you go on, but uh, how much of, of pass rush ability whether it's inside or outside, is just raw athleticism. I mean, is that something that, you know, clearly you're not going to take me and make me a pass pressure, right? So there's obviously an athletic element of it. How much of it uh, is just that raw athlete, and how much better can you make a guy through practice and repetitions and experience? Yeah, I mean, look, at this technique to everything, we believe in that. That's why we, we practice and preach fundamentals, and Brendan, I think, does a great job with it. I once heard a coach say this, and I think there's a lot of truth to it, that Pass rush, probably at any level, is like 70% want. Like, we always talk about being relentless. And if you – I did this one year. It's been a few years now. And I just go back and, you know, see sacks and pressures and why they're getting them. And as I sat, as I sat there and watched, I said, well, it's not necessarily a real skill thing they did, but they just wanted to get there. Now, part of that is the back end's probably doing a pretty good job, so the quarterback's holding it. But, you know, a long time ago when I was coaching the D-line at – Lafayette College back in the late 80s or whatever it was, we used to talk about, you know, rushing the pass, it was 70% want, just purely wanting to get there. Uh, but do I think there's technique involved? Yeah. And then to, to follow up uh, the get off, right? Like, and, yeah. and not to pile on on Frank, yeah. but there's metrics out there that say he's got one of the best get offs out there. But like we've kind of talked about here, maybe it's not uh, accounting for sacks. How much of it is get off? You said 70% is want to. All right, so that 30%, yeah. that's every – that's the rest of it. How much of it is, is that get off? Cause he has, it's seemingly a great one, but it's right now not translating into sacks. Yeah. Well, you keep, you guys, again, you keep going back to sacks. I mean, that's not, that's not what I'm looking at. Um, I don't think that is the one and only, only indicator of how a player is being effective in his pass rush. I, I don't believe that. So um, where we, everybody on the defense has talked about as we get down the stretch here, getting better at whatever it is we do. I got to get better at calling it and coaching it. Assistant coach is going to do the same players do coverage, coverage guys, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and I agree with you that Frank does have one of the better get, get offs. Um, and I don't know where the doubles or not the doubles are. I don't know. Listen, we've played some quarterbacks. Uh, I think Derek Carr does a great job of this. We get the ball out really quick. I don't care how fast your get off is, you know, sometimes when you get out quick, it's not gonna make a difference, you know? So anyway, I'm not hung up on the sacks. I'm hung up, hung up on the, the unity and how we're playing as a group, especially third down, uh, especially third down. If we can keep playing third down like we did last week, I think that'll help us.